what happens when you put in a little bit of a quiz game with a little bit of a special kind of thing like a slot machine in a bigger way? You've got the game show I'm going to be talking about today on the wide world of game shows, The Joker's Wild. Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews presents... Wide World of Game Shows! Greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to the Wide World of Game Shows. A little something I created earlier this year. I'm Dual, better known to as the Big D. And this is a show where I talk about all sorts of great game shows. And today I'm going to be talking about the game where knowledge is king and lady luck is queen. So now without any further ado, I bring to you... The Joker's Wild. The Joker's Wild is a fun-filled game that is actually a quiz game. Now, it had been aired at different times since the 1970s. Uh, where contestants answer questions based on categories determined randomly by a mechanism resembling a slot machine. The show's title refers to the game's slot machine mechanism also having jokers. Anyway, it was also notable for being the first successful game show produced by Jack Berry after his company's role in the quiz show scandals during the late 1950s, which the, sex, the success of this led to the then part of the reformation of Barry and Amright Productions in the 70s, which reunited Barry with his partner Dan Amright. The show originally premiered on CBS in 1972, and it ran for three seasons. It would, but however, it would later return. But I'll, t I'll tell you about that later on. Now, of course, Barry, who of course was also the host of the series, uh, well, hosted all versions of the show until his death in May of 1984. But Barry was not the original choice to host due to his past involvement in the 1950s quiz show scandals. As a result, Alan Ludden hosted the first two pilots for CBS, best known for hosting Password. And Barry hosted a local version of the series on KTLA a year before that, but CBS was still hesitant to let him host the network run the following year. Tom Kennedy, along with Lunn and Wink Martindale, who a few years later would host the new version of Tic Tac Doe, also from Barry and Enright, were the top three choices. But each was already committed to other shows. Kennedy was already tied to ABC Split Second, and Lunn had just started hosting a revival on a Password, also on ABC, and Marino was to host Gambit, which was to premiere the same day as this show on the same network. They even offered it to Dennis James, who had originally been the favorite to land the host job for the upcoming Comeback of the Price is Right, which would come that same year. But anyway, however, they also decided, but they decided to get Bob Barker to host the new Price is Right and Sav James. But, he, but Barker originally said he would gladly host Joker, but, well, the daytime, the president of daytime programming at CBS decided to just get him to host Price instead. With no alternatives, Grant did and. And Dennis James was hired by Mark Goodson to host a nighttime syndicate version of The Price is Right, but enough about that. Soon, Barry was given the green light to host. His contract, however, was only for 65 episodes, 13 weeks, a standard run for a daytime game show. By early the following year in 73, with no complaints from the viewers or the network and good ratings, Barry signed a regular contract to host the program and continued in that role up to its cancellation in 75. Now, however, after being absent, the show would return in September of 77 in syndication, where it did much better and ran until 86, despite after Barry's death. Now... Jim Peck, in 1981, after he recently hosted Chuck Barris's Three's a Crown, he, well, he would serve as a regular substitute for when Barry was unavailable. He stepped from several times between 1981 and 84. 
Anyway, and and soon by the A three the A four season, he, Barry would announce his retirement on the first episode of the next season and had the show to pick on a permanent basis. But however, when he, when Barry died of cardiac arrest in A four, and I posthumously overruled his partner and selected Bill Cullen, who more recently hosted the studio's recent series, Hot Potato, which was recently airing on network television. Anyway, Cullen hosted for the final two seasons, being his actual final game overall, but Hot Potato would be his last new game. There would be a nice version with Pat Finn, and more recently, a new version with Snoop Dogg hosting, which aired on TBS and on TNT. But that's all I'm going to tell you about those. The announcers include Johnny Jacobs, who was the original announcer, Johnny Gilbert, of course, the announcer at Jeopardy, and Roy Rowan filled in on occasion. But in syndication, Jacobs and Gilbert, along with Jay Stewart, alternated to the primary announcer position. But anyway, and then soon later on after Stewart left, Charlie O'Donnell, who of course was the announcer of Wheel of Fortune, well, got the chance. So anyway, the music for the series is really good too. It went from different versions. The first version of the song was called The Savers, and then the final CBS season, Instead, utilize an original composition called The Joker's Jive, composed by Alan Dick, who would later go on to do the popular Wheel of Fortune theme, Changing Keys, later on. But anyway, enough about that. Let's talk about how this game works. Two players go up against each other, and they... Well, they use... Well, have um, a little um, lever, like a slot machine. The challenger began the game by pulling a lever to set a slot machine in motion. The game's slot machine consisted of three modified slide projectors, which used six slide metal discs similar to the wheels used in Viewmaster toys. They were spun by electric motors, and unused categories were removed from the board by shutting off the projectors for those windows. There were various amounts of money, just depending on how many you get. If you get three set different categories, you have to pick one for $50. If you get a pair of categories, you can get $100. Now, if, but as for jokers, if you can get if you get um, two different categories and a joker, you can go for 100 Or if you get uh, two of the same category and a joker, or two jokers in a category, that's a triple. That'll give you $200. Now, later on, if you spun a natural triple, three of a kind with no jokers, you are awarded a bonus prize. But later on, it would be changed that whoever gets a, the answers to the question correctly will win the game. Now, also, if they don't, if by any chance they don't like the categories, if they want, they can use one of their jokers to go off the board. Yes. Using fifty dollars for one joker or one hundred for two jokers. Now, whoever wins the game, once they get up to five hundred dollars, that's enough for the win. But however, the other player will get a final turn to try to catch up. If they don't make it, then we got our champion, and they go on to the bonus game. Now, the bonus game was kind of a little different from what I'm known by. Later on, it was changed to face the devil. Now, we go to where um, a big lever is, and behind the wheels now are various amounts of money, ranging from 25 to, let's see, hang on just a second here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, ranging from $25 to $200, and devils. Now, the devil was behind one of the... It was on one of the wheels. Now, every time you spin and avoid the devil, you get the money, which will be added to your score. Now, your goal is to make it to $1,000 or more without seeing the devil, and you will win a big prize package. Now, if you win, um, well, be out five opponents, you will get a brand new car as well. Anyway, now, and that's all. But anyway, the Pat Finn version, I've only seen a little bit of that. The USA Network re-aired that show after it was showing syndication originally. It's alright, it's not quite as good. And I've never watched Snoop Dogg version. Mm -mm. I just didn't think it would be as good as this one. So I'm mostly going to talk about this version more because I like it. 
1979, there would later be a, well, one day, a, one time a week, kids version of the game called Joker, 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 where kids play for points, though, but they would bring a, well, their parents or guardian up to play the Face the Devil round. Now, to win, and they win the game, well, the actual game, and would win, like, a savings bond. Yeah, that's really cool. Anyway, there would also be various board games as well as video games. Well, some got video games, but not too many. But even so, I think the Joker's Wild was definitely one of Barry and Enright's greats. I've seen a little bit of the CBS run, but not a whole lot, because it's tough to find. I had more luck with the syndicated version, since Game Show Network actually aired that, although I have seen the Cullen version originally when USA aired it. never never showed the Barry version until I found it on Game Show Network, and that's why I soon started to like this show. I watched it every day when I came home from school, along with Tic Tac Joe. But anyway, this marked a big comeback for Barry and the Enright Productions. They would go on to do other games like Tic Tac Doe, as well as Break the Bank, The Hollywood Connection, Play the Percentages, Bullseye, and yes, Hot Potato. I'll talk about all those games in future videos. But anyway, that's, that's about it. So... Have you ever seen The Joker's Wild? If you have, tell me what you thought about it. You can talk about whatever ver whichever version, okay? I'm mostly more fond, loyal to the original one, okay? With Jack Barry and then Bill Cullen, all right? Just tell me what you thought about in the comment section below. Thanks for, for watching, and don't forget to click the like button below. Subscribe. Be a part of the Big D Nation. Okay, be back in just a second. And next time on the Wide World of Game Shows, it's Card Sharks. Thanks for watching, and if you like this, you might want to catch up on what you might have missed, or see them again, if you'd like. In the upper left-hand corner is, well, one of the most viewed ones. This came up there, but it fell short, but it's pulling up even more. The Child's Play Wide World of Game Shows episode, the upper... For right hand corner is last the last episode, and that being on Three's a Crowd, or if you want to go to the bottom left hand corner and see what has become the most successful one, my most viewed video of last month of April, When Ben Signs Money. The bottom right hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe if you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc. And the wide world of game shows, then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.